Welcome to Sophie TV. It is the match preview Arsenal versus Everton at the Emirates, which is a place that we don't have much success at. If, if no. any, a couple of draws here or there over the 20 odd years that it's been there. Um, always a difficult place to go. I feel like it's 18. But... 20 odd is 18, isn't it? It's mm. near thereabouts. You know what I mean? Just saying, mm. just saying. Uh, tough place to go, uh, and they are also a very good side. So regardless whether it's a tough place to go or not, they're a very good side, and it will be a tough game. It will. They're firing again now, aren't they? It's the other spell where their players lost a few players and struggled for a few games, but they've got the players back and they've won again and started winning a good result in midweek against Monaco. A bit disappointed in them at Fulham, but they should have still won the game. They had, you know, 12 shots at two, I think it was, and mm. dominated the possession and couldn't get the win against Fulham, but they're on a decent run of form and they've got brilliant players, so it'll be hugely tough. You know, they've only won there once, and that was uh, back in, what, 2021, was it? April 2021 when the Charleston scored, but other than that, it's been slim pickings from the Emirates. Yeah, I mean, we don't really count that one either. It's COVID. Don't really count anything that happened in COVID, to be honest. But mm. um, no, we 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 I mean, we went there last season, and it was a very very pressurised game for them. Mm. We were really relaxed and nearly come away with the results. Stupid goal in the last minute, which started by Ashley Young doing a stupid cross field pass that was never on, and I really don't know why he was attempting it. Mm. Um, we should have got something out of that out of the game. And I always feel like this game can be can be similar. In, you know, they need a win. They they have got to get mm. you know maximum points over their next four games. Let's say to keep that pressure on Liverpool and mm. um, Fulham. You know, dropping those two points massive because every you know every point they they know that because obviously chasing Manchester City last mm. season was difficult. It'll be the same this season chasing Liverpool and, and and Chelsea obviously in the mix as well. So it's really important. So I I, I look at it in many ways like no one gives us a, a hope in hell of getting anything no. from this game. And if you can almost have that relaxed manner of going into the game, playing with a bit of freedom, and. <sighs> Trying to you know stop them, every, you know ten minutes, fifteen minutes at a time. Then, mm. with our defensive record, you know, I know it wasn't great in the last away game, but in general our defensive record has, has been has been quite good. You know we can just frustrate them. Well, that'll be the that'll be the game plan, I'm sure. You know, keep it tight at the back, play it long, you know, to get up the pitch and hopefully frustrate them, like you say, but. I think the problem we've got is the the natural football that they play you can cut you open at the best mm. of times, but they're also really good offset pieces, aren't they? Yeah. So it isn't just like you know if you can stop them in full flow, you'll deal with the set pieces. Um, we've been a little bit hit and miss. It feels like this year defending set pieces, but mm. they are very good at it. So we'll have to be right on our game then. Right in these kind of games are sort of giving the ball up yeah sitting on the edge of our box and trying to get something I think these are just too good a team to to do that so I feel like we're going to have to come up with a slightly different way of doing it otherwise it'll be a long afternoon we're going to need Jordan Pickford to be at his very best and the defence is going to have to dig in and get blocks in and do all of that stuff to get a result yeah it's going to be obviously these you just you look at these games before you go into them, and they do look like a mount. It's a mountain, isn't it? And then obviously with the next three games, Arsenal and Chelsea were very, very, very good away from home, and then Manchester City on Boxing Day. They do look like very three, very three tough trips, uh, games trips, and mm -hmm. you look. Yeah, men, the mental side, I suppose, for the players is just take one game at a time, yeah. isn't it? And face one game at a time. Um, you know it is. As you said there, without having the goals, obviously scoring four against Wolves was, was massive, obviously from set pieces. Mm. But it is that, isn't it? Because we, we went to Old Trafford and you know, for the first 30 minutes, we dominated that game. And I think, you know, Forrest showed the previous week what can happen mm. if you actually can score goals. You know, scoring three against Manchester United, getting the win. 
you know, if we had any confidence or any sort of semblance of an idea what to do in the final third, I think we would have come away from something against Man United. Now, don't get me wrong, Arsenal and Manchester United are very different teams. You know, uh, Arsenal are nearly the finished product and Manchester United are nowhere near it just because the reputations and Arsenal proved that. I think in their last home game, didn't he? By beating Manchester United comfortably. So they are different beasts. So obviously, from the Manchester United game, we can't be as callous in the way we give the ball so casual the way we give mm. the ball away yeah. um, that led to two of those goals I suppose then maybe not having the ball as much we, we, we won't we won't be playing out from the back we won't be make, taking those chances so it is it is really important isn't it that we knuckle down and we yes we've got we're going to get a little bit of luck if we're going to get something out of this mm. game but we have to have a plan don't we that utilises certainly the centre forward I, I think he'll go for Dom in this one just because he needs that play who can hold the ball up. And, you know, um, better off for different things against Manchester United, yeah. but the ball didn't typically typically stick. I don't think Bros is ready yet. Um, so I think it will be Dom, and it'll be an important game for it to have for him to be winning um, the ball and then yeah. getting people in and around and support them because these teams. It's no point just going long if the ball just keeps coming back all the time and you're getting put under pressure straight away. Yeah, and if in Gabriel and Salaba, they've got two of the best defenders in the Premier League, haven't they? So Dom's going to have his afternoon's work. It's going to be very difficult for him. Mm. I imagine he'll keep up the light of Corey in there, in that ten, and try and get him breaking on it. Uh, and it'll be key how we play the out ball. We can't just hit a 50 50 and hope that it's. I mean, there'll be times when we do that, of course, mm. there will. But when we can play, we've got to make sure the ball gets to its target. And then, like you said, get bodies around it because only so long Dom can hold the ball off for mm. without before they take it off it. And these are like, like let's have it right. Arsenal are brilliant, mm. they're a brilliant side. They stuttered the other week because they lost injuries. and It'd be interesting to see if Liverpool lost three or four players all mm. at once, whether they could maintain it. Um, we're seeing with City now, you know, they lost a few players and all of a sudden they, they can't win a game. So Arsenal quickly got some players back and got back into the winning habit. But they are a really good side. The problem you've got with them is the likes of Saka, you know, Trossard, Odegaard. And then there's people like Gabriel Jesus who's on the bench, mm. you know, players like that. And um, Havertz is always a threat. But the midfield, you know, Odegaard, Declan Rice and Thomas Party are really mm. knitted together well. So they are a good side. They're dangerous from set pieces. But as you've just said, you know, Everton in general have been quite decent defensively. And they're going to have to sort of dog this game out a little bit. They're going to have to almost mm. Mikel Arteta Arsenal <laughs> in, in terms of slowing the game down. Not restarting it quickly. Mm. I was looking at something that was stat put up about how quick teams are restarting games, and it's it was about Spurs really, about like they haven't when they're in winning positions, they still restart the game really quickly, you know, instead of slowing it down and wasting time the way sort of like Arsenal doing. I think Everton are gonna have to do that to Arsenal. Yeah. Use a little bit of the dark arts, the dark Artetas yeah. on uh, on them, but they are a top side, and and we'll need. We'll need the rubber, the green, and we'll need mm. top performances to get out of it with anything, I think. Well, let's just look at the Arsenal team that faced Fulham, obviously, last Sunday. Now, Gabriel wasn't in this team, mm. and he didn't play against Monaco That's either. Test, doesn't it? Um, so it will be, yeah, I'm sure, you know, it, you know, I'll, you'll probably be back for this, but mm. he's he's so good at set I know they are good, but he always seems to find that little bit of space, doesn't he? Mm. He always seems to find that little bit of space in uh, that, that deep. Because Arsenal are brilliant like causing mayhem mm. and it just opens up that little bit of space and he's brilliant at it. So if he wasn't available, that would be a big bonus mm. for us. Um, obviously, it will be, it'll be a late one. Um, at both ends, really, you know, he, he, it would be a massive bonus if he wasn't available because I think Arsenal of late... It's so it's so interesting, isn't it? How you know you'd expect an Arsenal team, but it, a team to play. But it is interesting how they sort of open teams up by getting that first goal, which is a set piece, and then they go on. We've seen it at West Ham recently. Mm. It's that first goal that opened the game. Opens the game. West Ham have to come out certainly when they obviously when they're at home. 
but they use those set pieces and how they it's 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 just the chaos and obviously Declan Rice's delivery is just so good but it's the ca Everton's are like obviously we've seen ours every week ours is ours are really formulaic that it's like normally to the back post and it's whether you can deal with it it's mm. not you know it's coming yeah, yeah. but with Arsenal when you watch Arsenal there's so much variation in the way they do it and I think that's obviously why they're so good at it and I, I do really like that about Arteta that there's clearly he's took the Pep Guardiola school of football mm. but he, he hasn't left the David Boy school of football behind either he's took a bit of both which I think has made him the manager is at the moment well, so he was the uh, when he was Pep's assistant them City scored mm. corners and that. Well, the older said, often it's down to Arteta because he was. That's what he did. He worked on the set pieces as well. Now, mm. obviously, they've got a set piece expert mm. as well there now, so they've built on that. But you're right, yeah, he is. He's a mix, isn't he? He's got that mm. that defensive, um, you know, and all the little the little marginal gains yeah. that Moyes in, instilled in Everton when Arteta was there and he's, he's took that on with his own beliefs and his foot on Pep Guardiola's football and beliefs and mm. he's come up with a good little mix and they've been not the group obviously yeah. and um, he's done he's done well and they are at the top side yeah and uh, Thomas Partey's been playing at right back as well with mm. Ben White being missing as well so um, he's long term Ben White that would be an interesting one if I'm not necessarily looking from open play, but for set pieces, we showed against Wolves, set pieces obviously where we're, we're good at, of, mm. and we haven't been anywhere near that level, and they all seem to come at once in, in the Wolves game. Obviously, a lot of it comes down to Dwight McNeil's delivery. Everton have been... I couldn't quite understand why they were va varying it between him and Lindstrom, when Lindstrom's deliveries just didn't have enough on them, where you just think... If I some... still do think McNeil should vary it. I think when you just... The other thing in this game, I think it's a really important point to make is that David Rye is incredible at just taking crosses. Mm. And I think if you just hang it up, like where Everton got joy against Wolves was Jose Sarr was really poor mm. and didn't come for anything. Um, and the one he come for, he dropped, but yeah. luckily the referee had given, it wasn't far to be fair, but he dropped that one, whereas Rye is normally very good at taking crosses. Yeah. So that's why I'd like a bit of variation if Dwight McNeil's doing the in-swinging corner mm. maybe do what he did at Ipswich for one of the corners which he went near post yeah. and uh, they scrambled it away and then his next one was to the back post now okay I get you might think we only get mm. we might only get two corners yeah. and therefore our main plan is back post yeah. to Tarkovsky but I just think sometimes you can catch a team up by yeah it's variation mm. from him I wouldn't mm. I mean the variation has to come from Dwight McNeil's mm. Rather than, rather switching, than switching them over because I, I looked at some in recent weeks and we had really good opportunities and he was letting Linson take them and I just couldn't understand that why you would take I'd get Linson from the other side because he can bend them in but not on Dwight McNeil's not on when he's curling them in no, the goal. there's not enough power and precision for me when then Linson mm. was taking them and I suppose that was taken away from in that game in the mm. Wolves game by McNeil you know being on and, and playing and Linson not playing mm. that, that's normally a bonus you That's know. normally easier to yeah, implement. It's normally easier up. to, yeah, yeah. So um, Arsenal made changes in the week as well. Havertz um, was on the bench, and and as you started the game, uh, Timber was on the bench as well. Uh, Kane, uh, Declan Rice only played an hour or so, mm. so they did make changes. So they have they, they have a bit of freshness in the squad. But did Sinchenko play? <laughs> no, he's been out. No, because he's got a note. I'd seen Arteta saying that hopefully he's back for no, the game. No, because Calafiori's been out as well. Yeah. Uh, they'll all probably just come back with this game. Well, he said he was the only, <laughs> the only two he definitely ruled out were um, Tommy Ben Yassi. White. Tommy Assey. And Tommy Assey, yeah. who, who are long term. I think the others are all were, were touching. But they can't all play. So, I mean, essentially they can if he, if he makes changes. Um, but Evan, mm. Everton's. Uh, team stands to look a little bit healthier as well, isn't it? Let's just mm -hmm. have a look at Everton's team that faced Wolves over a week ago now. And obviously, you look at the side there, and obviously on the night he went for Decore in that central role, Dwight McNeil on the left, um, and Jai on the on the right. Obviously, I sort of had enough of switching between Harrison and Lindstrom and went for to bring Decore back, but. Mm -hmm. um, Mangala was important in that game, Moni, and he'd be important in this game. 
I mean, personally, I think he should have started a lot more games. I just don't didn't quite understand why he'd been on the bench. It just it just didn't make mm. any sense to me. But no. um, he's it, very good against Wolves in there with Garner. Mm. In all fairness, he just, I think he just keeps the game ticking over for Everton, and that's mm. what Everton, that's what we need right now. You know, Irabuna had a really good start to the season, albeit mm. he was better at home than away. But obviously we haven't had him for a while. He's been injured. In mm. fact, he, he took him out anyway against Leicester, I think. Yeah. And then it'd have been got injured the week after. Uh, and James Garner's not been available. You know, bar the odd a couple of games maybe earlier in mm. the season he's been injured as well. So he's had to sort of go between Garner, Decore, Mangala. But I'm with you. I think Mangala should have been in. He's got better and better and better. And he, he was, I gave him one of the match in, in the last game against mm. Wolves. Obviously scored a key goal as well. And um, yeah, he just knits everything together. And I think when you've got Patricia going around putting fires out, it's good to have that person who just knits it and gets it, passes it and moves you up the pitch. And I think he did that really well. And that'll be key again. But they are very strong in midfield. And particularly if Zinchenko is back and they put Timber at right back again. And that frees up Thomas Party to go back into midfield. Then Everton, will, you know, mm. it's going to be a battle in there with Declan Rice and Erdegaard, who, or Odegaard, who, uh, who is absolutely fantastic. In fact, I think since he's come back, Odegaard, he's created more chances than anybody. I think it's, se- I think it's 17 yeah. big, big chances or good quality chances, which is more than any other midfielder. And he's the key. He's absolutely key to Arsenal. Fantastic football, and of course, he's the captain as well. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, they've got plenty of options. It makes them the team they have. And one one little stat that'll give you loads mm. of hope is Arsenal have won eighty one percent of the home games in twenty twenty four. Sounds good. Um, Sounds and good. this one's a good one. This is the first time a match between Arsenal and Everton kicked off at three pm on a Saturday since December twenty eleven. It's ended in a 1-0 win for Arsenal. Robin Van Persie. Mm, Light on. Mad. Everton have won one away game in 2024. Well, um, what, a, what a tremendous start. And Everton have failed to score in each of the last three Premier League away games. Mm. So therefore, this one gives you got hope. all the, the whole Gives you so much hope, Everton doesn't victory. it? Gives you so much hope. But what, would you make changes to the team? Is there, obviously, coming off the winning... A winning uh, <laughs> It's this is really tough, right? Because I don't think Michalenko's playing very well at the moment. Yeah. But I do feel like when he's got like a man to mark, as in yeah, you identify that player who's like really key. Like I, I done the starting elevens for Wolves mm. and for Liverpool, and for the Wolves game, I took him out. Yeah. And I had Ashley Young at left back and mm. Nathan Patterson at right back, but obviously. The manager had gone with Michalenko and Young. Mm. And Michalenko again didn't have a very good game against Wolves, you know, below. I just think something's just not quite right with him, I don't think. Yeah. This season, where last season thought he had a good season. Just so, I don't know whether he's carrying an injury, he just looks a little bit not at it mm. the way he was. But for the derby, I left him in the team at left back because he normally has a good game against Mo Salah. Because it's almost like when he's got that task of just that player, yeah. he does it quite well. So that Obviously, that player is, is Bakayo Saka. He was brilliant. Mm. And he will have very much a man-to-man marking job on him to do. And I think when Mikko just has that job to do, mm. normally he's, he does that quite well. And also does the thing of Ashley Young passing infield in injury time against Arsenal, the Emirates, yeah. from a left-back position that I don't love. <laughs> um, so keeping him on mm. the right, and he has been, he's been good of late, yeah. Ashley Young, to be fair. So I think with, with that in mind... No, I don't really think the other choices, obviously, Abdelai de or yes, Lindstrom. But I think the manager will go with the with Corey yeah. because of legs and, and yeah. maybe breaking from sort of midfield. And he p- doesn't get the best out of Dwight McNeil because he shoves him back on the left where he's ineffective, mm. other than the set piece. Against yeah. Wolves, he didn't have a good game, Dwight McNeil, as in him, in himself and in open play, but mm. he creates yeah. goals from his, his set plays. I think he's he's more of a threat to the opposition from a central yeah. position that Dwight, but I think he'll he'll stick with. Well, let's just have a look at Saka's uh, numbers for the season so far. Fourteen games, five goals there, as you can see from an xG of three point eight six, ten assists, and big chances created. I think it's 
10. It's him. 18. I'm 18. 18. 18. Sorry, I don't know about this service. And uh, there's his heat map. Harvin is big chances created. Mm. I apologise, Bakayo. Uh, so there you go. He's the man we've identified as a route one danger man, yeah. in all fairness. Oh, yeah. Um, Odegaard, I think, is absolutely brilliant as well. He really he makes, the, in my opinion, he makes Arsenal tick, but Saka is the one. And obviously in midweek scored two and created the other one in the, that Monaco yeah. game, didn't he? So <clears throat> Michalenko's gone off his way cut out. But like I said before, I think when he's almost got that one job to do, mm. he sort of does it better. I think his issue is when we're expecting him to break forward and maybe create chances and do this. Yeah. He struggles a little bit, but man to man, he's normally... Hear him not having a great game. He's normally decent doing that, so I think the man is. Up. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's a tough game. It's a tough run of fixtures. Obviously, we skipped one last week, mm. which could have been the start of it. But who knows? It could have been, could have gone the other way. We won't know. It's gone now, and that'll be for late, you know, early next year. Mm. Um, it, it's how we play, isn't it? More than anything else, it's how we perform. It's, it's, it's what. Um, you know what, what, what the players leave us feeling like when they walk off the pitch. If they've done it, we, you know, this time not this time quite last year, but you know we went to Spurs and we were beaten two one. But people played quite well. People went. You know what? You had a goal. Yeah. You had a goal, and you were really unlucky. We got a draw. Yeah. We? With the bar in the last Dan's minute. Um, yeah. Everyone was like, "You take, you take something mm. from that." The results. The result is the result, and obviously results are all that matter, but. You can take something out of it. Of course, you never want to accept a defeat, and sometimes the result can be the imposter as well. If you, mm. if you, and that, I think that's what most football managers do. They will look at how the team played mm. really and go, "No, we were, we were good in that, mm. even though we've lost the game." The problem we've got is we've lost too many games and we haven't won enough, and mm. therefore the results override it. But you're right if Everton go and have, go and have a right good go, and make it difficult for Arsenal. Mm. Then who knows what can happen then. Yes, they, they are brilliant of set pieces, but I think Everton have scored Everton fifty seven percent of Everton's goals this season are from set plays. Mm. So we're not we're not bad either. Mm. Could be three all from set plays. Who knows? It it could be. Who knows? It could be. You never know. All scores are possible. Mm. Well science. All logistics. I think legit yeah. One of the one of the two anyway. Well, uh, outcomes. <laughs> There you go. There you go. I don't know where to go with that. Uh, there you Finish go. Finish probably better. There you go. We'll know at five o'clock on Saturday anyway. So, uh, yeah. And then, just, listen, final Strictly's on then. So, it doesn't matter really what happens. Your okay. emotions will not go any. Your emotions will... Who's will, in the will, final? Just out of interest. Uh, I mean, I haven't got interest, but I'll just ask. <laughs> People who dance. Well, you, watch, you must know them if you watch it. You knew it was the final, but you don't watch it. Of course, it's the, everyone knows it's the final. I mean, it's, I in, the, it's in the it's in the it's in the TV times. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right, leave it there. I thought uh, you knew he was in it. Well, Who's been in it? Um, anyone of note? Cisco. Has he? No. No. Oh. You lie. Oh, the fella he done. The, the, don't compare, but. He caused a bit of a stir, I believe. Why are we having this conversation? You brought it up. <laughs> this wasn't on my my Arsenal preview bingo. Well, there you go. Talking about that's strictly. what I like to do. Throw strictly care. go winning Everton. Do that. Mm, there you go. There you go. And then we'll go compare this game <laughs> with other games. Chelsea game. There you go. Uh, there you go. Give this video like, subscribe if you haven't already. Why wouldn't you? With all this great chat. Uh, and if you want more great videos, join us over on Toffee TV Premier. Also, check out our Strictly preview. <laughs> <laughs> Can Chris McCausland do it? Who's he? Is this? So, who's blind fella? Is he in it? Yeah. Yeah, so, why, are you, why have you been all coy when he asked you if he was in the final? I didn't want to hype oh, it up. Just hype it up. I didn't want to hype You've it up. already outed yourself as watching it, so tell me who's in the final. Big Chris against who? Come on, don't do that. Oh, I don't know. Let me rack the me brain. The girl used to be Miranda. The blonde one. The one out of Joblot. I don't know what Joblot is. Sh uh, Fra Sh what's her name? Frankie. No. Her name? I don't A know. little sidekick. Yeah, yeah. Okay. She's in She's it. the finalist. And there's somebody else. Oh, they got three in the final? Eh. Yeah. I don't know. You mix it up, haven't you? Oh, like celebrity. I'm going to get an hour and a half out of it. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Someone else. Is it Frankie? It doesn't sound No, it's not Frankie. Frankie. Miranda. 
Stevie. 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 That, that was the name Politics. in Miranda. It's not yeah, a real that's name. Not a no, that's not a real name, is it? It's not a real name. No, I wasn't going for a real name. I was going for Stevie. Okay. We'll leave it there. Make sure to check out our instant match to strictly come down to reactions. I hope we do. Right. There yeah. you go. Came for a preview. Stay for Strictly. Bye. Bye.